Hello, my name is Christina and I welcome you to the RC Farm. Today I'm going to be starting some uh, ranunculus, some anemones, I'm going to start some eucalyptus, some lithianthus, and, um, and then I'll probably do another video with not so much information to start a whole bunch of vegetable seeds as well, some cold hardy vegetables. So the first thing that I'm going to do is start with my ranunculus and anemones because they need to soak uh, for three and a half to four hours. Uh, this is my first time starting them, so I am hopeful that they do well and that we'll have some beautiful flowers. I would just be thrilled to have some ranunculus and anemones and freesia in my garden. So here we go. So the first thing that we're going to do is start off with soaking our anemone and our ranunculus corms. Ranunculus and anemone are like these dried up corms. They look dead. Like there's nothing to them. Very dry and very dead. And so we soak them in water to bring them back to life. So that's what we're going to do first. These are my anemone bulbs. And it's still so early in the year, I haven't made plant markers yet so I'm just using some popsicle sticks that I have but they um what I usually do for plant markers is I'll buy a four dollar blind like one of these blinds at Walmart and cut them up into plant markers and they make hundreds one blind makes hundreds of plant markers but I'm going to label these There they are. So it's wise to keep these aerated. You can either keep a trickle of water under your sink going in it, or um, somebody, I saw somebody put them in mesh bags in a bucket and then put that bucket in their bathtub and have a very slight trickle of water. Um, I've also seen um, where somebody, you can use like a fish tank bubbler or even a fish tank filter where it's pouring water into a bucket or some sort of tank. But um, you can also just every 30 minutes or so come kind of give them a mix and stir it up a little bit gently to get some oxygen flowing in there. Um, that will work, that's what I'm going to do every about 30 minutes. And in three and a half hours, we're gonna plant these. Okay, the next thing that I want to plant is freesia. Now, freesia is a warm weather crop, and so I might be shooting myself in the foot here by planting them so early, but I really have this vision of planting freesia and ranunculus and having them come up together and being a beautiful bouquet together. The white freesia with the white ranunculus. And, but um, I'm just gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna try them early and I'll keep them under my grow lights until they're ready to go into the warm weather. And they should be much bigger uh, going outside in say May and I maybe put them under row cover because I have had frost after May. Um, so usually I'll plant, I'll plant my warm weather things out in June in the Poconos, but I really want to have these earlier than later. So I'm going to try them now inside, keep them happy under my lights on this plant rack here in my kitchen. And I will hopefully be able to keep these um, happy until they're time to go outside. I can plant them up into bigger pots. I have that. I have the space for it. I have the lights for it. So I think we should be okay. 
So whenever I'm working with Pro Mix, I always put rubber gloves on because it makes my hands really dry for the rest of the week. So when you're done, you want the consistency of like a wet sponge that's been wrung out. You don't want it to drip too much. When you squeeze it, maybe you can get a couple drops out of it. And it's still pretty loose. Plant it directly into this. This does not have holes in it. This is solid. And we are going to fill it about halfway so we can place our corms in it. Space pretty close together. As they start to grow, uh, separate them and um, put them in their own little cups, um, their own little planters. So I'm just going to take some Pro Mix. Put a bunch in. Keep it nice and loose. Um, and then I'm just going to take our freesia and start with these and just place them right here. So there they are. The rest I'm going to be waiting until the ranunculus are ready. So for Lysianthus, I'm going to use these here. Trays. Uh, for Lysianthus, you need light for them to germinate. So we're going to fill these almost all the way up to the top. I've read that they like to grow algae. Uh, we may have to come in and just kind of scrape algae off the tops, but you can also, I've also seen where you can use some vermiculite on the top. A very thin coating though, because again, it needs light to germinate. And so, the vermiculite just has to be very fine. That's supposed to help with the, um, the algae problem. But I don't have vermiculite and I'm just going to give it a shot. If I have to scrape off algae, so be it. So something fun. Uh, we are Eagles fans in this house. And the Eagles right now are playing the, 49, the San Francisco 49ers for the NFC Championship. So we, whoever wins is going to the Super Bowl. And currently we are winning 21 to seven. I think we're still in the first half though, so that could change. But okay, so I have a mess. <laughs> I have just enough dirt left to go on top of my ranunculus when we're done. And then I have to get more dirt from the store because plant season. Okay, so this is my first time growing Lysianthus. I'm so excited, it's so beautiful. Um, and these are, this is what it says. So 12 to 13 weeks in deep cell packs before your last frost. Do not cover the seed as light is needed for germination. Keep soil evenly moist but not saturated and maintain 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit soil temperature. Provide good air circulation until emergence. I've, I've heard this next part throughout my research a few times. Reduce the moisture level once the emergence has occurred and allow to dry out slightly between watering to prevent algae growth. So that is kind of going to be the best we can do is don't overwater once they're, you know, reduce watering once they uh, germinate 
And then um, don't overwater after that point because that will reduce algae growth. Um, and then transplant no later than the fourth leaf stage, approximately 21 to 28 days. So three to four weeks from now, we're going to need to transplant out of here. Whether they're going to transplant outside into a, like a hoop situation, hoop house, or whether they're going to transplant into bigger pots and go under some higher lights um, and, and stay under the lights inside is unknown as of now. So Lysianthus is supposed to be very small. In here, there's a minimum of 50 seeds. So I am going to, let's see, we have, and they're very tiny, they're pelleted. <clears throat> Just a tiny little bit is 50 seeds. So super tiny. I also have room for digitalis, um, eucalyptus. So I'm probably going to do, this has 99% germination rate. So I really only need one. There we go. First, let's see in this. That's exciting. Bam. Okay, so I just want to show you that, number one, look how they plumped up from the water. Look like little banana bunches. But you want to put the bananas down and the stem up. And that's for ranunculus. Freesia. That one's got a root. It's easy to tell, but point up. Anemone, point down. Just like that. them in. Okay, so it's the next day. I didn't get to finish filming this video last night. Uh, but I did want to mention a couple things before uh, I end this. With our Lipsianthus, our Digitalis, and our Eucalyptus in this tray, they all need a light source in order to sprout um, so or to germinate. And so once you have them settled right on the top of your soil here, you're not going to really want to uh, disturb them until they can sprout because then they'll kind of get knocked under some dirt. So what I'm going to do is for the first <clears throat> little bit of time here, I'm going to use a spray bottle in order to water them. 
and just lightly, even the spray bottle will push the seed. They're so tiny. Uh, so just gonna lightly spray in order to water. And under a light source, these will dry out quickly. So you gotta be careful. Um, see, I'm even moving the seeds a little bit. So you gotta be really careful. And so make sure they don't dry out and keep them well watered. This is probably gonna need to water every day. Another thing that you can do is bottom water and then the soil soaks the water up. So you would just pour the water inside the tray uh, right in there and then plop your, um, your plants in and then plop these right in. And from there, <clears throat> they will soak the water up and get water that way. So bottom water or a, a light spray bottle in order to water these. I found that uh, with the type of soil that I use, ProMix, um, it has a hard time soaking up water, and so that's why I use the spray bottle. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention was our lights. So these lights here I have, this is two bulbs, and this has four up top, and I'll add them as I need them on the shelves but they um, are just regular everyday shop lights. So I found them on the Facebook Marketplace. You can just type in shop lights on the Facebook Marketplace and um, usually there's a lot to pick from, a lot of options to choose, but just a simple shop light works. Um, I know there's a lot of other options out there. There's LED lights, there are, um, you know, every, part of the spectrum as far as, uh, you know, le the least expensive to the most expensive, but I didn't pay more than $10 per fixture. These big ones up here, I love them because they kind of get everything and they, uh, were $10 and it was just some dentist who was switching his lights over in his office. And so they were really cheap. You just need to get rid of them. And the same thing. So just look on, you know, uh, Craigslist or the Facebook Marketplace if you want to just go like the cheap route, which is I'm always trying to save a dollar because things are just so expensive already. Like by the time you buy the seeds and the trays and, you know, the blind for the plant markers and, you know, the soil. Um, and then you got to buy lights and, and then you got to pay for the electric to keep the lights on. Um, so it just adds up, you know, and this is all to like reduce cost or even maybe make a little bit of money in the end because we might sell some bouquets or something like that. And so, um, I'm just trying to keep my costs low. Um, and that's just, you know, inside, once we go outside, we're going to buy greenhouse fabric and the hoop rings. And I already bought this last year, but watering system, which is drip tape because the garden is just too big for me to water every day. And so I needed, I needed a, um, a way to water it, you know, every day in the summer, especially the heat of the summer. So I, you know, got the, the water drip system going on. And so it just adds up. So anywhere that I can save money is just what I want to do. And so that's why I use the shop lights and um, to replace the bulbs are inexpensive as well. So that's what I do with that. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, and the ranunculus and the anemone, they are on the bottom shelf down here, I'll show you, but they are uh, just gonna sit in the dark. You just kind of want to keep them in a cool area or in, you know under a bed or in a basement. You know, if a basement stays around 60 degrees, that's what, that's good. I don't, my basement gets too cold. It gets like 40 degrees and, um, our bedrooms get pretty warm. So there's a door right here and it's on the ground. So I think this is going to be the best bet for us to sprout them. And then once they sprout, uh, they can stay there for a little longer and then we'll get them under some either outside under row cover or we'll get them under some lights up top here. So, uh, that's about everything that I wanted to cover. Um, I'm really excited. I can do an update on these things in, um, a few weeks. The Lysianthus and Digitalis and Eucalyptus are slow growing. And so that's why we want to start them early enough. 
So uh, that's what we got. So good luck growing, and we'll see you next time. Wish me luck. <laughs>